And then, oh my gosh, you've got to see this. This is adorable. Hello, howdy, and welcome to the official end of the winter garden and the beginning of the spring garden. I'm Catherine, the Arrow Garden Homesteader. So, I feel like today kind of marks the end of the winter garden. I have, I basically only have a couple things left in Arrow Gardens, and I will probably be taking them down or trying to uh, get them into the dirt and see if that'll do anything. So, as you can see, I do still have some peppers on here, but I am going to give this the chop chop. So, and I will show you what that looks like. Over here, we have the mini jalapeno. As you can see, it has been absolutely decimated, but it is coming back. You can see there's growth all along here, so it's, it's pushing out growth. This one is just starting to show signs of growth as well. I also gave this one the same treatment. This was the, I believe this was the snacking pepper here. And this is the, uh, what was this one? The pretty and sweet. So, as you can see, there's only two in this one because I removed one. So, stay tuned. There will be a video on me taking this out, planting it up, getting it pre prepared for going in the ground. So it's in a pot right now. And hopefully it will work. Just a sneak preview of the mini jalapeno that I put in a pot of dirt. Definitely stay tuned for that video. It will talk about all of the steps I did to get to this point. So hopefully this will work because I want to get the rest of these out. There are, there's two in this one, there's two left in this one, and there's two in the one I just showed you. So like I said, the, I can't remember which ones those were. It was the Joe Pepper, the mild one, and then I don't remember what this other one was. But I am going to chop, chop, get all the peppers out and just use them up and prepare them for going outside. So hopefully they will take to the transplant. So stay tuned for that video and it will either be yay it worked and I can do the rest of them or boo it didn't work and I have to try something different. This is the cherry tomato with the mini bell pepper or whatever this was. It was a bell pepper of some sort. This one might actually be close to being able to be picked but I do wonder if they change color or if they're just green. So I'm gonna let it go. So I was treating these every other day with rubbing alcohol. I was just spraying it on uh, top of the leaves, bottom of the leaves, just anywhere I could think of, both plants. And both plants are thriving. There's a lot of new growth. So I don't know if you can see in there, there's a lot of new growth. Down here, there's actually new flowers forming. The plants themselves are doing great. I don't know if there's any spider mites. So I was treating every other day, and then I went to a Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule. Now I've backed it off and I'm doing a Tuesday and Friday schedule. And every once in a while I do pull out my camera and I do, like I can zoom in quite a bit with my phone camera. So I do check to see, you know, are those eggs? Do I need to keep spraying? I'll probably keep spraying honestly because I just want to make sure that, you know, there's just nothing. I don't want spider mites. My gosh, I don't want to have to take this down and get rid of everything in the house just to get rid of these bugs. But don't know how many more updates I'm going to do on this. I will at least update you if there's been any changes with the spider mite issue or, you know, if I've backed off on the rubbing alcohol, but we'll see. Now, I had to bring these in, and they are under the, or getting some of the residual light from this arrow garden. This is the celery. I felt like it was doing poorly outside. You can see there's a lot of yellowing of the bottom leaves, but since I brought it in, sort of these first leaves have started greening up, so I think it has been beneficial for me to bring it in. But we'll see. Uh, it has been kind of cold at night still, so but that's the uh, that's this area. And the rest of the seeds are all outside. Oh my gosh, these are they're getting so big, and I need to up-pot them. But like, it's just so full. I have no space. These ones I did manage to up-pot, so these are Romas. They were a little smaller. I should have probably done the beefsteak first, which are these ones. They are bigger and tried to get those going so I can move them to cups, but he didn't. More tomatoes. These are more Romas that I didn't manage to up-pot. These are the Rio Grande, I believe. Rio Grande. This is Alyssum, I think. More tomatoes. Oh my gosh, just so many tomatoes. These are the cherry tomatoes. Yeah. These are the Rio Grandes. More of them that I managed to up-pot. More Romas I managed to up-pot. These are the jalapenos. They 
have growth, but for some strange reason, they just don't look very good. I seem to struggle with peppers. I don't know why. See, this one looks fine. That one looks pretty good. So some of them look good, some of them don't. I don't know if it's the seeds or not. But. And then down here, I've got some of the nasturtiums, coneflowers, and calendula. So this is calendula. These are all of the sunflowers. Basil, more basil. I didn't need basil. I shouldn't have planted them. Those are marigolds. I need lots of marigolds. I probably should have planted more and not did basil, but oh well. These are, I don't remember, they're flowers. The ones in the back are the chamomile. That's all I remember. And then over here, more flowers. The, let me see, can I read the tag? Yeah, this one's got amaranth, so that's the pink one over there. The California poppy and the delphinium. This is zinnia, lots of zinnia. So, and then over here, these have just been staying outside, no matter how bad the weather has gotten. So this is the cauliflower, this is broccoli. Uh, don't actually remember which is broccoli anymore and which is cauliflower, but it doesn't really matter, I guess. This is mustard. So mustard's actually doing pretty good. They're, they're a pretty hardy plant. And then this is cabbage. So I actually I think I overplanted the cabbage. I'm going to see if I can squirrel these away somewhere else in the garden, but I'll just have to see. And then in the ground, there are more seeds. They're uh, upstairs on the deck. I'll show you those. And inside. Oh my gosh. This is the mustard. And then I did put in the onions and the leeks and things, so hopefully they will do pretty good. Some of these do look like they're doing pretty good. Some of them do look like they're struggling, but this is the garden. This row here is a mix of, it's like cabbage, cauliflower, and broccoli. It goes all the way down, and then more onions along the side. And over here, I have the planted elephant garlic over here, regular garlic on the other side. This is again a mix of the broccoli, cauliflower, and cabbage. And then I have onions down on the end with some strawberries in a raised bed that need to get dug into the ground. And then just so you can see what I'm dealing with, it's like a huge wall of hedge that is blocking the sun. The sun is actually, it's got another hour, I think, before it's going to come over these, or 45 minutes. So yeah, this is just, it's a sucky spot. I'm making the best I can. The sun will shift, so this will get more sun, I hope. But yeah, though the weather's been improving. It's still pretty cold at night. We've been getting down to 27. And up to about 50s during the day. Yeah, these look really good. The um, apricot out front is actually just about ready to pop the flower. So, so we're getting there. We're getting there. I can't wait for it. These are the seedlings that are out on the deck. I literally have seedlings everywhere. So these are all of the different peppers. So I've got the... These are just green peppers. These are Anaheims. I believe these are, oh, these are poblanos. And then, oh my gosh, you've got to see this. This is adorable. Look at these tiny little asparagus spears. They've turned into fronds, but you can also see, look at this, there's a tiny little asparagus spears. They are adorable, oh my gosh. I mean, it's totally expected, but boy, they are so cute. So. These are the asparagus. I did up pot them. I got more down here on the ground because I don't have any room on the table. There's more over here. This is one random, let me see, what was this? This is in uh, Anaheim, I think. So it, uh, it was a mystery pepper. So I'll probably just put that in my garden. I won't try to sell it or anything. But yeah, I gotta have lots of asparagus. I've got another one that's got some, uh, I don't know if you can see, it's got some yellowing on the tip. So I don't know what's going on with that. I am getting more seeds going for the garden. So what I did was I have an absolute ton of all these kits from the different arrow gardens we have bought over the years. I've got the little ones for the sprouts, the big ones for the um, bounties, and I even had the medium sized ones from the harvest. So I went through and I pulled out a ton of the seeds. So I had four mints, six chive, five Thai basil, I've got 14 parsley, 9 dill, 9 thyme, or 8 dill, 9 thyme, and 17 basil plants. Now the parsley is a mix of flat leaf and Italian parsley, but I am going to get all of these started. Uh, hopefully I can figure out a good labeling system, but I'm going to get them all started. And in the arrow gardens, their respective sizes, and I'm actually going to get 
I don't know if you can see this. I'm going to get one of the farm modules started as well, just so that I have enough room. So, let me see. Let's start with parsley, since that one's probably going to be the easiest. I only have 14 parsley, and the thing, the seed tray for the sprout holds 15. Assuming I did my math correctly. Now, the tedious part is I'm going to have to push each of these out and drop them in there. The other thing is, I don't know if it is worth organizing which are Italian parsley and which is curly parsley. Like, it just doesn't matter to me. Uh, I, I don't really have a ton of intentions of eating these. They're more for just uh, pollination and plants. Uh, you know, just to, um, what do you call it? Cross-plant. Interplant. Anyways, uh, I mean, I guess I'll figure it out when they start growing. Now, the other thing is, these are old. We got some of the first uh, arrow gardens, like, almost two years ago, and the seedlings were, or the seed trays, or the seed kits were due to expire shortly after, and I used a few of them just to get an idea of, you know, hey, what is this arrow garden stuff all about? And, oh my gosh, this is really cool. Let's get more, but I don't need any of these herbs. In fact, I don't really cook with that many herbs. So we are going to get a little herb garden going just to have some, you know, it's like I do enjoy an occasional mint tea. So that's, that's part of what the herb garden is going to be for. But, okay, so this is all... Parsley. I gotta figure out a way to label that. That one's parsley. You guys are gonna have to help me remember the gray one is parsley. The black one is gonna be a cross between mint, Thai basil, and chive. Maybe I can do one row of each. That might actually work really well. So let's do them in alphabetical order. Since I got this all on film, hopefully I will remember. So we're gonna do this is chive. Oh, I got six chive. Oh, that ought to be fun. Okay. I think one of those, that was a mint. So I guess I have five chive and five mints. Good thing I checked. Okay. So I will get these in their arrow gardens, I will get water in there and I will get them going. I will not give them any food until they start sprouting. So that's that's just the way I roll. This does not want to come out. What a mess. Well, hopefully some of these will germinate. It would be nice to get some of these in the garden. I guess if they don't, I can always go and get some seeds and put some more in the pods. And this is Thai basil. I did, uh freeze dry or no I think I dehydrated. I dehydrated some Thai basil. It's got a um, a light anise flavor to it. So if you kind of like that licorice flavor, that's a that's a good one to grow. If you have no idea what I'm talking about or you don't like licorice, then uh, probably don't want to do that. Okay, so that was those done. Now we're gonna do dill and thyme. So this one's going to have basil in it as well, just regular basil. And then the rest of the basil will go in the garden, because that one can hold 12. I really need to get one of those seed starting trays for the garden. Or the farm, I mean. It uh, can hold a lot. This is a Thai basil. Did I mess up somehow? I did. Okay, let's just not use that one. Okay, I guess I can't count. Oh, well, I guess there was supposed to be eight in there. Okay. So time going. Definitely don't need this much time, but part of the problem is I've got so many of these things lying around, and it's like, what am I going to do with them? So I figure I can put some of these in the garden, spread them around. Time has nice little flowers, I think, so it'll help bring in pollinators. We do have some nice raised beds that we just got put in, so, like, last year we put in some really tall, decorative raised beds, so. Okay. 
Okay, at least I can count on that one. There we go. And then, so, put some of these out of the way. I have no space. Okay, this is a massive basil. I get this tape off too. Oh, well, that's kind of annoying. The uh, reservoir to the farm does not sit flat. Okay. So, I'm going to fill this one up with basil, and then whatever's left, it will go in the farm. Now, the reason for that is because I can put covers on the farm, but I can't put covers on these. There's just no... I'm going to... I have a 3D printer. I'm going to design some covers to fit on those if I can't find a print file for them. Because that's... just seems kind of ridiculous. Okay, well, this is more of the garden getting prepared. I think I am about... Oops. I think I am four weeks out from my last estimated frost. So... Obviously, I'm not going to throw things in the ground immediately unless it's uh, cold, cold tolerant. But okay, so I got two two wells not filled. So I will get some covers for those. And you know, if your um, thing doesn't sit flat, sometimes if you turn it, so it's it's because of the spout here. It needs to fit in one of these grooves. So if you have it fit in the groove properly, it should lay flat. Okay, so. And this thing doesn't lay flat either. It's like it's got the cutouts for the rods underneath, but then there's... Yeah, that's weird. Okay, so I'm going to get these filled up with water. I'm going to get the arrow gardens turned on. I only turned one on for light, which obviously wasn't enough light. Hopefully you guys can see this. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to... You know what? I might just throw that one in there. But uh, I'm going to get these filled up and on their way to sprouting. So hopefully uh, we'll see some action at the next plant update. So I am starting some seeds in one of the farm units just to get it going and to get an idea of how everything works. I did notice that these don't sit well on a flat surface. So it's kind of got, because of the way the um, bars are and the curve in the front, you can see it's kind of a little tippy, so you got to be really careful with it. The other thing I noticed is, let me lift this up, so this is approximately how much water there is in there. It did not fill it up all the way. I was trying to fill it up just about halfway because, you know, when you're starting seeds, you don't need a ton of water. So, the problem with that, the bottom of the seeds are not getting wet. So I'm going to have to put in a lot more water. So let's see if we have to fill this up all the way. It's probably going to be a real pain in the butt to carry back over to the farm. But, let's see how much water... Is that getting wet now? Nope, not yet. Let's see, do we have to put in the full? Oh, you know what? I think maybe, maybe we got water touching. Let's pull out another one. Nope, maybe not. Okay, well, I'm gonna have to get more water, but that's uh. I don't know if you can see, it's about halfway to the... Oh, it's not quite. It's a little more than halfway, and the pods are still not touching. Yeah, the pods are still not wet on the bottom. So, we're probably going to have to fill this up with almost the full two gallons just to get these covered. Versus over here, I did not fill these up all the way. You can see there's the water is down, down a little further. So, and these are definitely getting wet. You can see the water wicking up into the pods. This one isn't quite wet yet, but the other ones are all wicking up. So, yeah, let's see. Let's see how much water it takes. Okay, I got more water. Another full half gallon here. Let's see. I'm waiting to see if the sponges pop up. When the water hits them, sometimes they pop up in their... That's just going to take all of it, I think. Well, we're just... I think the bottom of the basket is hitting the water now, but not the sponge. 
So I think it's going to have to take the whole thing. So that's just something to take into account that when your seed's starting, you literally have to fill this thing up all the way. Yeah, there you go. See, it's just starting to hit the bottom of the sponge. And I am almost full, but not quite. So it probably could take a little bit more water, maybe another half gallon. But that's, that's ridiculous. That's a lot of water to uh, have to do just to start some seeds. Yeah, see this one's just barely, barely touching the water. Let's see how... Well, see that one's got some water contact. This one, yeah, it's got water contact. So, okay, well, it's just something to take into account that when you have um, seeds starting, you need to fill this up all the way to make sure you've got good contact with the water. Because if you don't have the sponges in a moist environment, they will not germinate properly. They, the seeds just need that moist environment. Okay, well I have filled it pretty much almost all the way. Could stand to have a little bit more, but yeah, see there, that's now halfway up the sponge, I think. So yeah, that was doing a lot better. Okay, so you got to start with a full load of water. This is going to be really heavy to carry back over. I should have filled it up on the unit, but I filled it up in here, so that's just going to be fun, huh? Wish me luck. And I did start more seeds, so I started some zucchini, some broccoli, and some pumpkin. I also started some lettuce. I thought I'd give it a try outside. I don't know if my season will be long enough for it because I feel like we have a really short spring here. It goes like it's cold, it's cold, it's cold, and then all of a sudden it's just really hot and cold weather crops don't do well. So we will see. But I am about two weeks out before the last estimated frost date. At that point I need to start checking the weather to see what I can actually start putting in the ground. That is a warm weather crop. Like pumpkins and cucumbers and tomatoes and all those things. Peppers. Peppers will probably wait until they're bigger, but the, the tomatoes will probably go in the ground pretty quick. I could also start beans, but I'm actually thinking of doing beans as a fall crop this year. I think they do better in the fall. So I will probably start those end of July-ish, I think. But yeah, I started these about a week ago, and I don't see any movement on them yet. But, you know, it'll happen when it happens. But just to show you, the lettuce did come up. Oh my gosh. So, I guess I will find out if lettuce will grow for me. It might end up just being uh, harvesting it as tender lettuce while it's still pretty young before the heat hits it, but we'll see. I do have some areas in my garden that are... I feel like they're in perpetual shade even though they aren't. I should probably plant them there. That'll probably be the best spot for them. More plants for the outdoor garden. These, I don't think I have any real germination yet. I got this one here that's got fuzzy growth on it, so either it's gone bad or it's trying to germinate? I don't know. These were really old seed pods, so I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't germinate, but I did get some germination. I got a row here. I'll have to look back through my notes to see what I planted where. But And then over here I got quite a bit of germination going on as well. I should have put the light up. So I think, I think these ones are dill. There's basil all along the back. And then I'm not sure, I don't remember what this section was, but there is a little bit of germination in this section as well. Not quite as much as the other one. Might be time. But it, uh, it's starting, so. And these are the ones that I started in the farm. This is basil. But as you can see, I do have some coming up. So, old seed pods will germinate. There is one in there. I don't know if you can see it. But, so... I'm going to have some basil in the garden. I'm going to have a lot of basil in the garden. But this was a really good way to clear out some of the old seed pods. And this is a really good way to um, help with some of the beneficial planting that I want to do. I want to do a lot of companion planting this year. And this is how I'm going to do it. I really do need to get the seed starting tray for the farm because I think, you know, instead of having to run four arrow gardens, I could have done it in one. But I don't have it yet, so... I hope you found this video useful. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I will see you next time on the Arrow Garden Homestead.